Thank you. We might want to, uh, Cynthia Brown's on, and I don't know, she might have a uh, announcement while we wait. Perfect. Yeah, we'll get so everybody for joining. This is uh, the Free Press Salon, February 11th, 2023. And uh, thank everybody. We're going to be speaking uh, peace tonight. It's um, We're listening to Voices of Peace in, the, in a World of Conflict. So we have, we'll probably start with a few announcements while we're waiting. Um, Yuri uh, Shilashenko is calling in from uh, Kiev himself, and then Megan uh, Anderson, who's going to call in from Cincinnati. Uh, uh, but uh, Yuri is a very prominent figure in the pacifist movement uh, to, to resist war as a, as a whole institution, but beyond that, um, yeah, Megan must be here. I see she's now a co-host. Good. Um, but beyond that, it, it's to, to a strong resistance to just uh, this particular war, but in general, uh, war in general. So Yuri has a very strong perspective and, and will be uh, joining us hopefully soon. Um, so uh, why don't we do quick announcements? Uh, and then we can we can jump into things as well. So um, Suzanne, do you want to run that section of doing? Because I, I you, you think Cynthia has an announcement. Cynthia may have an announcement. I saw Cynthia Brown. I saw that you were on. I didn't know if you might want to announce anything about your endeavors. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna let. Uh, I see Kyle's on the line too. Can you hear me, Kyle? I'm gonna let him speak. Hello. Go ahead, Cal. Go ahead, talk about the ballot initiative. Cynthia, who's Cal? Cal? So, okay, um, well, let's wait till he gets his technology right. Yuri is on, and I want to be really conscientious to his uh, time because he's joining us at 2 a.m. in the morning, okay? So I really want to make sure that we we take care. So, Cynthia, get get, get your announcements together, and, and probably in about a half hour we can do that uh, if you're okay we're still with us. If not, put it in the text and share with everybody. Um, thank you again. So Yuri, uh, uh, thanks again for joining us. So it was about a year ago when he joined us, right when the war was getting going. And uh, I think we were one of the early uh, shout outs that he did. And, and we didn't let him really give a, a, a strong presentation. So we wanted to give him a chance to do that now that we're a year into this uh, craziness that's going on in Europe. And so, and with with US help, uh, sorry to say, but um, it is only going to get worse if the US keeps doing their stupidity. So uh, Yuri, thanks again for coming on and uh, welcome to the Columbus Free Press. Again, Columbus Free Press, February 11th, 2023. Uh, we're listening to the voices of peace and uh, in this world of conflict. So um, yeah, we really have a big, strong focus on your, uh, on Ukraine tonight, but uh, there are many, many other conflicts. So we're going to be listening to some other folks that may have some other uh, areas of conflict. You know, um, so we want, want we want to understand that peace still has a way, uh, to, and it is the way. And so thanks, Yuri, for joining us again, and let let us. Uh, Welcome, Yuri, and, and we will be uh, all ears for you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for opportunity uh, to speak here. Uh, dear friends, I'm speaking from Kiev, where I raid Sirens Hall today, and I hope uh, I will not have electricity turned off and we will have opportunity to talk. On behalf of Ukrainian pacifist movement, I would like to convey gratitude to your alternative media outlet, uh, which covers voices of peace and protests of peace in Ukraine coalition, our uh, wonderful friends in the United States. Uh, you protest against the real evil of war, not against the fake demonized image of the enemy. And you're right. It is easy to portray criminal decision of Putin to invade Ukraine, 
as a root of all evil, forgetting prior years of death and suffering in Donbass because of violations of Minsk agreements, right wing violence against Russian language and pro Russian figures in Ukraine, as well as policies of defeating Russia, uh, designed during Cold War and never abandoned with NATO nukes approaching Russian borders. It is easy to put all blame on the enemy for tens of thousands of killed people, millions of refugees, ruined cities, protraction of war for months and years, cannibalization of social and environmental welfare to fuel the war machine. It is easy to think uh, the destruction of the enemy will bring peace, but violence brings only more violence. Promises of quick victories made by President Putin and Zelensky were, are, and will be empty words, uh, since their plans for war, uh, when they talk more seriously, are plans of endless multi-decade war. Whole story of escalation of East-West conflict and relentless fight for control over Ukraine between Russia and the West, late by the United States, uh, uh, shows there is no such thing as just war. There is only unjust system of militarism on all belligerent sides, exploiting people to produce weapons, to turn civilians into soldiers, and in the end to kill people, to sacrifice people to the Moloch of war. Uh, we understand how hard it is for you to oppose the war effort in a society mobilized to war against Russia, informational and economic war for, for now, but further direct clash is possible. So thank you for your courage. I received uh, threatening calls at night myself because of my advocacy of ceasefire, peace talks, and human rights to refuse to kill. I will not succumb to intimidation, but many anti-war voices are silenced or marginalized here in Ukraine, as well as in the West uh, and in Russia, where the peace movement suffers from cruel repressions of Putin's regime. This war was legitimized not by manufacturing consent, but by beating Eastern and Western societies into consent to hate, to fight, to give unchecked war powers to governments and to enrich uh, bosses of military industrial complex. It is painful to see how easy people are turned to agree to exchange bread for guns and life for death. How easy militaries manipulate public finances and popular opinion with no legal and democratic restraints, with all checks and balances turned into worthless formalities. Nobody questions war and militarism. I was asked by organizers to give an overview of current affairs we are coming, and uh, 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 indeed we are coming to tragic anniversary of war, and uh, what we have is enormous death toll and destruction. I uh, uh, already said something about it. There is more than uh, seven uh, thousands of civilians killed. Uh, it is numbers confirmed by United Nations, and they emphasize uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, conservative estimate, so uh, real number is bigger. From different sources, it could be 40,000 of civilians on the Ukrainian side. Uh, uh, talking about military personnel, uh, as uh, General Mark Milley said, uh, it uh, uh, could be uh, more than hundred thousands of people on both sides. And uh, uh, now we have uh, ongoing Russian offensive in eastern Ukraine, in the regions of Bakhmut, Ugledar, and so on. Uh, and the uh, Ukrainian offensive uh, is uh, in preparation. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, of course, there are a lot of civilian casualties on the other side. Um, uh, uh, for um, uh, thousands and five hundred civilians uh, uh, were killed by Ukrainian army in separatist controlled the Donbass. It is a number from Russia hosted area formal meeting of United Nations Security Council on uh, uh, 20th January. 
and we see war crimes on both sides, such as bombing hospitals, in particular uh, from Ukrainian bombing uh, uh, a mission of Red Cross in Donetsk was suffered. Uh, um, also uh, uh, using human shields, uh, mistreatment of prisoners of war, use of landmines, all of this unfortunately uh, uh, both committed by uh, Russian and Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, and uh, uh, attempts to end war failed because of strategic war posture. Uh, uh, we see uh, that um, uh, uh, this uh, 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 preliminary uh, uh, agreements on ceasing war in Istanbul uh, um, was uh, turned into nothing because uh, uh, Boris Johnson uh, uh, took uh, to Kiev uh, promises of unlimited weapons supply. Uh, uh, we see uh, that uh, uh, Russian attempt uh, to, to solicit a Christmas ceasefire. By the way, it was not Russian idea. It was idea of International Peace Bureau. And uh, uh, Russia ignored the idea to have several weeks of peace. They decided uh, uh, to uh, uh, proclaim unilateral ceasefire uh, only for one day. And uh, it is predictably failed and was uh, uh, smeared as Russian propaganda and so on and so on. Uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, we see also uh, that uh, uh, Russian strategy uh, to uh, continue war, uh, but uh, ask for so-called uh, realistic uh, uh, approach and peace talks uh, 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 is also uh, not uh, effective uh, because because uh, 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 distrust on both sides is enormous. Uh, uh, and we see belligerent diplomatic efforts polarizing the world uh, because uh, Russia mobilizes uh, global south uh, and uh, build strategic uh, relations uh, with China, uh, opposing uh, uh, militarism of the United States and NATO. And uh, 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 NATO, uh, of course, uh, uh, continues uh, its uh, uh, multi-year uh, uh, pattern uh, of uh, uh, military domination uh, and uh, uh, provoking uh, world war. Uh, and uh, uh, in this polarized the dangerously polarized war, uh, both uh, uh, poles uh, have uh, uh, um, nuclear stockpiles uh, able to kill all life on the planet. Uh, it is uh, indeed uh, a very dangerous situation. Uh, and uh, uh, we heard Putin's and Zelensky speeches, and they basically said they are prepared to wage this war for a uh, um, long time. Uh, and uh, uh, we see how the media uh, are covering this war. We see uh, instead of fair information, uh, this uh, absolutely blatant lies, uh, total information war. We know how effectively the media wing of the military industrial complex sold uh, this war to the people. Uh, they uh, uh, made it a story of uh, democracy against uh, autocracy. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 they made this the story of democracy under attack by ruthless dictator. Uh, but I doubt Ukraine is democracy, and there are serious reasons uh, for such doubts. Militarism and democracy are not compatible, and Ukraine is no less militarized than Russia with a post-Soviet uh, system uh, of conscription and military upbringing. Under martial law, President Zelensky closed the Iron Curtain on borders, prohibiting all men from travels abroad to conscript them cursively. Students are beaten by border guards for attempts to, uh, to go study in European universities. Zelensky ignores their petitions. Thousands of people are arrested and turned into cannon fodder. Conscientious objectors to military service, such as Vitaly Alexeyenko, are sentenced to prison uh, without due process. People forced to flee desperately from military mobilization and tens of refugees are frozen to death in Carpathian mountains or drawn in cold waters of Tisa river. Uh, uh, it is hardships of Ukrainian war resistors. 
organizers asked me to cover status of uh, uh, nonviolent uh, um, action of pacifism of conflict reduction uh, and uh, you know um, uh, there is of course uh, some uh, uh, governmental uh, attempts uh, to to uh, uh, employ these methods we see uh, projects of regime change uh, subordinated to military strategies and because uh, some nonviolent methods are weaponized uh, they uh, are not ethical uh, it is formally non-violence uh, but in fact it is one of weapons of war they, they are used uh, to to harm so-called enemy uh, uh, this uh, uh, regime change projects and uh, uh, we have uh, regime change projects uh, uh, against ukraine in russia uh, uh, in Russia, they have a uh, 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 so-called project uh, Another Ukraine. Uh, they, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, in Russia, they are not uh, attempt to destroy Ukraine, to eliminate all, all Ukrainian people, as Western propaganda of war says. They uh, uh, try to organize some sort of regime change, as uh, many times uh, uh, United States done uh, in other countries, uh, to, to create more loyal government to them. Uh, and uh, it, it is about this uh, project of other Ukraine. Uh, uh, a part of it uh, was article of uh, former Ukrainian politician Medvedchuk. Uh, uh, about uh, supporting uh, uh, Putin's uh, uh, um, strategic approach uh, of so-called uh, uh, historical unity of uh, Russian and Ukrainian people, uh, which is very problematic thing because uh, it is not idea of unity of all people on the planet. It is idea of unity of uh, Russians, Ukrainians and Belarusians against evil West. And of course, any idea of unity against the enemy is a bad idea, because enemy is a bad idea, because uh, uh, any image of enemy is fake and lie. Uh, uh, basic conflictology says that. Anyway, uh, 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 in uh, 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 part of this other Ukraine uh, uh, project of regime change in Ukraine launched by Russia uh, was recently a, a round table uh, organized by an institute financed uh, by uh, Russian presidential administration. Uh, 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 another project, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, long term project of regime change in Russia. Uh, um, organized by many uh, government funded uh, think tanks in the United States, uh, including uh, uh, such as uh, uh, National Endowment for Democracy and so on. Uh, um, uh, they uh, uh, try uh, to uh, create networks of people uh, able uh, to uh, just oust Putin uh, and uh, took to power uh, some representative from elite uh, uh, more uh, sympathetic to Western hegemony in the world. This hegemony project uh, uh, and American leadership is, of course, uh, uh, is uh, um, their uh, uh, focus of uh, uh, political strategy. And in Ukraine, uh, we have even more radical uh, idea uh, of regime change uh, in Russia. Uh, it is idea of dismemberment of Russia uh, by support of national liberation movements. Uh, 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 arming uh, uh, ethnic minorities, uh, uh, gathering uh, ethnic minorities uh, uh, to, to, to create some sort of uh, uh, ethnic-based um, uh, uh, resurrection in Russia. By the way, it is not uh, uh, um, uh, genuinely Ukrainian project, it is old project. Uh, Ukrainian nationalists uh, 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 was uh, supported uh, some time ago by uh, uh, CIA uh, and uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, anti-Bolshevik uh, uh, block of nations. 
uh, was uh, uh, um, uh, waged this uh, ethnic resurrection uh, regime change project uh, uh, for former Soviet Union. It is uh, just continuation of this Cold War time strategies. Uh, uh, it is government supported uh, uh, ideas of weaponization of uh, uh, nonviolent strategy, projects of regime changes. Uh, now we are coming to genuine uh, projects of, of nonviolent resistance. And of course, they are marginalized like alternative media, like uh, alternative peace movements in the United States, in Western countries, in, uh, in Russia too. There are, of course, people. Uh, who are not uh, uh, um, affiliated uh, with Western funded projects, uh, uh, who are just uh, uh, protesting against the war. And in Ukraine, too, there are some such people, uh, but uh, uh, indeed in very hard situation. Uh, uh, genuine uh, passive and active resistance to militarism exists in any society, because uh, peace is uh, one of basic human rights. Uh, and uh, 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 any culture uh, have uh, some restraints to violence uh, and uh, uh, any society produce uh, uh, in situations of conflict uh, some people uh, who are uh, uh, building peace or at least uh, uh, actively uh, resist uh, uh, escalation of conflict. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, especially uh, it is seen uh, on example of violent mobilization, because there is indeed violent mobilization in Russia and in Ukraine, and I will uh, focus on violent mobilization in Ukraine. Uh, 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 first uh, of all, uh, uh, we uh, see uh, uh, problematic legislation. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in Ukraine, because uh, 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 on, in post-Soviet countries, there is no uh, legitimate option for conscientious objection to military service, uh, or uh, this option is uh, very limited. Uh, 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 in uh, uh, Ukraine and in Russia uh, exists so-called alternative service, but uh, it is uh, uh, inaccessible to a uh, vast majority of people who are not willing to serve. So mostly people uh, resist uh, to uh, um, conscription in peacetime and uh, now uh, to military mobilization uh, by such uh, informal uh, and criminalized and stigmatized methods uh, uh, as, uh, uh, for example, uh, not going to recruitment centers as low demands, uh, um, uh, uh, such methods uh, as going abroad, uh, such methods uh, uh, as uh, uh, um, uh, uh, bribing uh, uh, officers of recruitment centers and indeed uh, 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 officers of recruitment centers uh, uh, are extorting bribes in many cases. Uh, 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 there is uh, 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 many indicators uh, uh, that uh, conscription and military mobilization uh, uh, is uh, 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 total by law, uh, but uh, uh, not uh, so total in practice, despite uh, uh, very active and cruel attempts, uh, because uh, 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 army uh, uh, corrupts society, uh, and officers are just extorting money, uh, and they are uh, uh, just uh, uh, enriching uh, um, uh, by their bellicosity, uh, 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 say uh, enriching themselves, uh, and for that end, they need uh, this law about uh, uh, universal uh, compulsory military service and uh, uh, so on. Uh, uh, and uh, talking about conscientious objection, uh, position of Mil uh, Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, it is impossible uh, in uh, uh, time of war. They say law allows it only in time of peace. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, author reading of constitution. Uh, uh, the uh, constitution says that uh, military service uh, uh, without uh, any uh, um, uh, 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 special uh, arrangements for uh, time of war, uh, in any case, military service could be uh, replaced uh, with alternative non-military service. It is constitution, but uh, uh, constitution was passed uh, uh, after more archaic, more old uh, uh, law on alternative service. And law on alternative service uh, uh, was uh, more militaristic and uh, uh, it uh, uh, contained no provisions of alternative service uh, in time of war. So uh, um, uh, uh, what uh, uh, in, uh, how some local authorities uh, reconcile this difference, uh, 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 this conflict of laws, this um, uh, whole uh, in law, uh, say, uh, um, say uh, ask uh, military recruiters, uh, they will uh, probably uh, propose to you uh, some sort of alternative non-military service within the army, which is absurd. Uh, but uh, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, military recruitment offices uh, uh, indeed propose uh, uh, such options. Uh, uh, it is very informally, but army is generally non-democratic and non-transparent institution. So they uh, they could say anything, and uh, uh, with blind trust to army and society, uh, uh, any uh, psychological operations of army will be accepted without question. And uh, uh, what uh, um, uh, things they could uh, uh, propose war resistors, for example, uh, uh, not killing people, uh, but uh, serve in kitchen uh, as a soldier. Or, or for example, uh, they proposed Jehovah's Witnesses to dig trenches. Uh, um, uh, and uh, 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 there are some cases of uh, war resistors uh, uh, who are uh, trying uh, to defend their rights uh, uh, openly uh, in uh, the way prescribed by law. And unfortunately, uh, it is uh, uh, not successful examples. Uh, uh, one case, for example, uh, is uh, Andrei Vishnevetsky. Uh, uh, he was forcibly conscripted. Uh, uh, they uh, caught him on the street in Odessa uh, and uh, uh, took him to army. They intimidated him. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, have a wife uh, and a daughter. And uh, 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 he don't want uh, uh, to uh, lose possibility to see them. And uh, if, uh, 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 as uh, they threatened him, uh, he will be imprisoned uh, for five years for evasion of military mobilization, of course, it would cease this link between uh, him and then uh, uh, family. So uh, he, uh, uh, he went uh, to compromise with his conscience. Uh, he, he go to army, but uh, in army, he categorically refused to take arms. He, he refuses to kill people. Uh, uh, he several times uh, uh, re refused orders uh, to, to, uh, um, uh, uh, to kill the enemy. Uh, but uh, he is now in front line and he agreed to serve in kitchen. And he asks for uh, 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 discharge on uh, uh, grounds of conscience, uh, but he is not allowed. Uh, uh, we are continuing to uh, um, provide him legal aid. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, it is very bad conditions. Uh, uh, he had uh, uh, lungs uh, uh, in inflammation uh, uh, because of uh, lack of heating uh, in barracks and so on and so on. So it is damage for health, it is damage for uh, psychics and so on, but we are uh, um, uh, trying to help him. Uh, uh, another situation is Vitaly Alexeyenko, which I already mentioned. Uh, Vitaly uh, was uh, uh, um, sentenced to one year of prison uh, for uh, his uh, refusal uh, to uh, kill 
uh, fellow humans uh, because uh, uh, he is a Christian. Uh, he, he, he believes in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, uh, he believes in Jesus Christ uh, teachings about uh, 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 commandments of love. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, he, he uh, 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 treats seriously uh, a commandment you shall not kill. Uh, 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 and he said it in court, and uh, 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 court sentenced him to uh, prison. By the way, uh, uh, his case is exceptional. Uh, mostly uh, people uh, who refuse uh, to kill on religious grounds, um, they uh, are uh, sentenced uh, uh, to three years of prison, but prison is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, changed, uh, um, uh, uh, incarceration was replaced with probation uh, to uh, uh, one year or in some cases to three or four years. Uh, probation means uh, that uh, uh, court imposes on people obligation uh, to um, uh, meet a probation officer uh, two times a month, uh, and probation officer uh, 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 tries uh, to reform them, including, of course, military indoctrination. Uh, uh, it is a problem, uh, uh, and uh, in case of any um, uh, uh, violation of conditions of probation, uh, they could be imprisoned for this long term. Uh, uh, um, but uh, 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 Alexeyenko case is the first case uh, 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 when uh, uh, conscientious objector uh, was sentenced uh, uh, to prison without a replacement of incarceration to probation, and appellate court uh, refused uh, uh, to change this verdict, we are working on cassation. Uh, uh, there are uh, massive violations of human rights in the context of military mobilization. For example, hunting for, for, for draftees at the streets. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, um, uh, for all men in age from 18 to 60, uh, the travel abroad is prohibited, uh, and uh, this prohibition was criticized uh, uh, by Office of United Nations High Commissioner on Human Rights, uh, but uh, our government is not care. Uh, um, uh, uh, videos, any, uh, uh, even videos, uh, uh, when, for example, uh, two officers are dragging, uh, physically dragging a, a conscript from home, and, and the son of conscript uh, uh, is uh, uh, trying uh, to stop them. Uh, and the uh, wife is crying, uh, but uh, they still drag uh, men uh, to army against his will. Uh, such sort of videos uh, are dismissed as Russian propaganda. And uh, six petitions uh, to president uh, 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 were filled and gathered more than 25,000 of signatures. It is a mandatory number of signatories uh, uh, to petition to be considered. Uh, um, uh, six petitions uh, asking to allow students uh, to leave Ukraine to study in European universities. Petitions uh, asking to stop this cruel hunting for conscripts, uh, handing out uh, uh, orders to appear in recruitment centers uh, uh, on the streets, uh, in uh, 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 cafes, and so uh, uh, even uh, near the churches. Uh, they uh, uh, hunt for uh, draftees. Uh, um, these petitions were ignored, and our president Zelensky uh, 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 just is trying to shift responsibility. Uh, uh, he he uh, uh, writes uh, uh, that Ministry of Defense, Cabinet of Ministers, others uh, uh, should consider this but nobody is considering it. Uh, and uh, uh, according to uh, law uh, on national security of Ukraine, the president of Ukraine uh, uh, is uh, uh, um, uh, a key figure uh, in democratic civilian control uh, over military affairs. But it is a joke. There is no democratic civilian control. Uh, all uh, uh, all uh, 
complaints uh, on human rights abuses of army are redirected to army. Uh, complaints to human rights abuses to parliamentary commissioner on human rights uh, are not considered. Uh, and uh, uh, when we many times uh, raised the question of conscientious objection to military service, Ukrainian parliament commissioner uh, just uh, wrote uh, absurd denouncement uh, uh, to security service of Ukraine, uh, uh, in fact, asking for uh, uh, repressions against Ukrainian pacifist movement. Uh, they they uh, uh, didn't do anything because uh, they had uh, uh, bigger uh, fish uh, to to catch. Uh, but uh, uh, we fear uh, that uh, uh, on some point uh, they they could also come to us. Uh, uh, people are scared and not want to defend their rights. Lawyers suggest to admit guilt. Mm, and uh, uh, all of it uh, is uh, uh, um, uh, hidden under propaganda of uh, so-called big democratic changes, but democratic civilian control uh, over uh, armed forces is absent. Yuri, uh, Yuri, uh, uh, that might be a good, good. I'm going to let you finish and complete what you're saying. There's some folks that you've dropped a lot of knowledge on us, a lot of knowledge. And, and there's some questions that I'd like you to maybe answer as you're trying to com complete. Uh, I, I would like to conclude uh, because there is also uh, a territorial integrity, women leadership and prospects. Of correct, policy. correct. Can, yes, can, correct. Can I answer on this? I, uh, I would need like two or three minutes. Okay, that's great. Uh, some of the knowledge that you're dropping is uh, they're asking uh, information that Ukraine may know about the involvement of the U.S. West, uh, involvement in stopping the war or starting the war and continuing the war and stopping negotiations. That's some. And then the other question was about the economy and and is the economy totally absorbed into the the war now zone or it, how, how is that responding how's your how's the ukraine economy uh, ukraine yeah, and about two more minutes and we'll and then we'll get into more questions but that go okay. ahead with your your two more questions two three more minutes and then we'll get into more of those questions thank you uh okay thank you um uh, Ukrainian economy, uh, in short, uh, uh, decreased. Uh, um, uh, we, we lost uh, uh, a third part of economy, uh, and uh, in several uh, sectors of economy, uh, like, for example, energy, uh, uh, we lost uh, uh, more than half of uh, uh, economy, uh, especially after uh, Russian bombings. Uh, uh, and uh, indeed, we are lucky uh, that uh, um, uh, uh, I, I have electricity during this event. Uh, but in case if electricity will go on, uh, I uh, will reconnect during several uh, minutes. Uh, I, I will use some autonomous uh, um, uh, power sources, uh, which I bought with help of some Western friends. Uh, um, uh, as for uh, uh, Western so-called uh, peace building uh, approaches, uh, uh, no. Uh, 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 we don't see a uh, willing to stop weapon supply, uh, which should be a basis of any uh, peace building approach. Uh, on the contrary, we see commitment to supply weapons uh, uh, for indefinite time, uh, which means uh, uh, that uh, uh, leadership of NATO is ready to continue this war uh, for long years. Uh, and uh, 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 you probably heard about this so-called Zelensky's peace plan. Uh, uh, it is, of course, not plan of peace, but plan of endless war. Some set of excuses uh, why uh, 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 our security in so many uh, spheres is in danger, and that's why we should destroy Russia. Uh, and uh, uh, important part of this Zelensky so-called peace plan. 
plan is uh, so-called security guarantees of um, uh, Kyiv Security Compact. You can Google it and you can find it at the uh, website, uh, official website of President of Ukraine. And this Kyiv Security Compact includes, uh, I quote uh, from executive summary, uh, uh, it needs multi-decade uh, effort uh, uh, of uh, uh, military support uh, from uh, the side of NATO countries, basically from United States, uh, 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 to, to continue uh, 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 Ukrainian self-defense efforts, military self-defense. So indeed, this uh, Zelensky uh, so-called peace plan is plan of endless war, and it is endorsed, as you know, uh, by uh, uh, Biden administration, uh, by uh, uh, many leaders in Europe, uh, by leaders in the United Kingdom, and so on. Uh, so uh, 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 only uh, some uh, uh, circles uh, in the West, uh, uh, basically circles which are interested in refocusing uh, military hegemonic pressure from Russia to China, and some circles interested in, in uh, uh, preservation of business relations with Russia, uh, uh, such sort of circles are caring uh, uh, about uh, 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 the escalation of uh, um, this uh, uh, ongoing armed conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and uh, uh, it was, for example, uh, rent. Uh, um, uh, corporation uh, report uh, uh, that uh, uh, it is not in interests of United States to, to, to protract war, uh, and especially uh, main factor of protraction is commitment to territorial integrity of Ukraine. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 this report suggests more proactive measures uh, uh, to uh, uh, encourage uh, uh, um, uh, 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 less rigid approach uh, to this question, uh, but uh, uh, Rent Corporation is financed uh, by uh, uh, Koch family, uh, and they, they have some business interests, that's why uh, they uh, um, uh, probably interested in some sort uh, uh, of report, uh, but uh, arms industry is very uh, big and influential, and uh, uh, competitors uh, have uh, a lot of resources, uh, so probably uh, uh, it will take much more than one report uh, to uh, uh, convince uh, uh, anyone that not Atlantic Council, uh, the most influential think tank uh, in uh, lobbying uh, strategy of endless war, in particular in the interests of NATO uh, and uh, uh, near NATO war profiteers, uh, including big four of arms manufacturers, uh, uh, it, it will take uh, indeed uh, a lot of more investments and uh, uh, social movement uh, to uh, lobby peaceful solution um, uh, in this conflict. Now, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, with your permission, take this uh, two or three minutes to respond to uh, the last questions of organizers about uh, uh, importance of uh, uh, or urgency for territorial integrity and women leadership on path to peace and prospects of progressive policy outcomes. Um, I was speak, uh, asked to speak about, and uh, it uh, looks indeed very interesting and ch challenge combination, I would say even strange, because sovereignty and territorial integrity are archaic capitalist narratives from times of feudalism and monarchy which have nothing to do with peace building. We need nonviolent service instead of sovereignty and uh, environmental harmony instead of territorial integrity. This approach gives real prospect of progressive policy outcomes. Those who use progressive narratives to apologize Russian or Western narratives of war are wrong. They wrongly inflate mythologized image of enemy, for example, emphasizing on imperialist or fascist resemblance on other side to explain the necessity of mass murder of uh, these demonized imperialists and fascists. 
uh, and uh, 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 so similar uh, 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 false propaganda on both sides. It is just amazing. So there is nothing progressive in Biden's, Zelensky's, or Putin's war mongering. No war could be progressive. And uh, to those who think differently, I would like to quote Martin Luther King, who emphasized on futility of violent responses to violence. He said, I admire freedom fighters wherever they are. But I still believe that nonviolence is the strongest approach. Organized nonviolent resistance is the most powerful weapon, weapon that oppressed people can use in breaking a loose from, from the bondage of oppression. Now to women leadership. A year ago, we had great example of it when Ukrainian and Russian women uh, carried a cross together at Via Crucis in Vatican in support of peacemaking efforts of Pope Francis. And they did Pope Francis do a lot uh, to stop this war, but uh, his voice is one of uh, uh, maybe less marginalized than others, but unfortunately uh, uh, it is not taken seriously. Both in Russia and Ukraine, women protest uh, actively and passively against the war and forced mobilization. Uh, for example, in Ukraine, we have uh, this uh, uh, woman protests who are coming to recruitment offices and uh, uh, protesting and demanding to stop uh, uh, take men to army against their will. Uh, 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 and in Russia, for example, women uh, 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 place anti-war uh, uh, writings and in public places or uh, um, children toys uh, with uh, the stains of blood uh, to demonstrate uh, uh, that uh, uh, war is uh, cruel and inhuman way and so on. Uh, however, a long years of masculine chauvinism and military structure of economy make women vulnerable to propaganda of war. Many women expect from men to be soldiers as their basic gender role, and they participate in unfair shaming campaigns against those brave men who refuse to kill. Uh, nevertheless, there is stigma uh, uh, and so on. Uh, in that criminal prosecution. There are opposite examples. For example, I personally know a family where uh, a wife and daughter of forcedly mobilized soldiers support his conscientious objection and try to help him to ask for honorable discharge on the ground of conscience, despite Ukrainian legislation don't allow it. We have disgusting examples of women leadership in war when leader of Ukrainian human rights defending organization co-awarded by Nobel Peace Prize, her name is Alexandra Matvichuk, advocated war in her Nobel speech and in many other public speeches. Uh, she uh, uh, called uh, to, to stop talk about peace. He called, uh, she called uh, uh, for uh, more weapon supplies. She also disdainfully rejected a notion of brotherhood of people, uh, which uh, Nobel Peace Prize is supposed to promote according to Nobel's will. And uh, she refused to participate in common interviews with Russian and Belarusian human rights defenders. Uh, uh, another example, when Amnesty International denounced Ukrainian fighting tactics, which endangered civilians, another uh, well-known woman, uh, and indeed one of Ukrainian women leaders, uh, Oksana Pokolchuk, resigned from position of head of Ukrainian branch of uh, Amnesty instead of calling armed forces of Ukraine to respect international humanitarian law. And uh, uh, President Zelensky also, uh, uh, as you probably know, uh, participated in this uh, 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 campaign of trying to, to cancel, uh, to, to uh, express disrespect to Amnesty International because it says truth about uh, uh, war crimes on both sides, not just uh, participate in informational war uh, of the West against Russia. There was one woman in Ukrainian pacifist movement who left our organization because her sons her three sons uh, uh, didn't like her pacifism. Uh, 
and under air pressure, he, she left. So uh, there are a lot of challenges to women leadership in Ukraine, peace leadership, uh, of course, uh, posed by war and militarism. And Ukrainian women don't have support of such strong anti-war movements as in the West, relatively strong. I know you think your peace movement is weak, but uh, in comparison with Ukrainian peace movement, uh, uh, it is uh, amazingly uh, uh, numerous uh, and strong. Uh, we, we Yuri, 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 thank, thank you for giving us our, 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 uh, our, our happiness that we're, we're much stronger than you on peace, but I don't think we are. But uh, I do, we do have another voice of, of peace from the United States that wants to share a little bit with us tonight. Yuri, thank you again. Your, your knowledge is enormous and, 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 and you could go on for like days and years, et cetera. I know you can. I know I, you I can. hope uh, I answered questions. And no, I you've answered. I, I am not I think... uh, 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 takes uh, 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 more times than you. Can. I know you. No, no, no. You, you were great. Thank you. It, it's just our format is a little bit more. We like bouncing back and forth. There is the the a question that is also out there. But I want to bring in uh, Megan Anderson. If you can stay with us a little bit more, we'll have a little bit more conversation as well. But Megan Anderson is the regional um, organizer uh, 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 for the uh, Black Alliance for Peace uh, uh, Solidarity Network. And she's based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And I, I, I want to sort of uh, start your presentation, Megan, but then also in Yuri's with um, yeah, the, the understanding that uh, the, the anti-war, the peace movement in the United States is divided. There is a major, major voice saying we have to promote uh, uh, this war because it is uh, stopping an aggressor, an aggressor. And then there's others within that same that same Melu that are saying, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. We have an, an action coming up February 19th at, in DC it has been lambasted and from left, right, center uh, folks saying that we shouldn't join it. And this, this is one of our first anti-war actions since the beginning of the war. Um, but are we gonna join it in the United States? I don't know. We're gonna do something locally here in Columbus, February 18th. We're gonna be at noon at North Broadway and High Street. Please join us at noon. Afghan and the folks have been out there all since 2001, 2002, 2003. They've been out there. Join them that night, that day, that day, February 18th this year. And then hopefully we will be able to uh, also put something together for the 19th to do it like a teach in on this te on the uh, the war that's going on, the wars that are going on. Um, so, Megan, uh, Yuri, thank you again. I hope you can stick with us a little bit longer. I know it's like eight in the morning out there. Uh, please. <laughs> no, it's not eight. It, it's like three in the morning, four in the morning. You, I know. Thank you. Bless you for being with us again. Thank you again. But Megan, can you can you sort of uh, maybe bring in your perspective? And I know you have a, a presentation that you want to do. I know, folks, please bear with us. This is a different format than we do with the salon. With this has been a very different format. But I think we need to drop some knowledge on ourselves because, as I'm saying, our movement. Our progressive movement, our leftist movement, whatever, however you want to define yourself, is divided on this issue seriously. And it was under Syria, it was under Yugoslavia, and it's and it's they are not even speaking about Yemen, let alone Somalia or or Cameroon or even the the violence that's going on in Ethiopia. So there's not being a, a, a true conversation going on within the the, the peace movement. And we need anti-war movement, however you want to define it. So, uh, uh, Megan, would you mind go ahead and 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 Stephen? I think uh, you're uh, abling her to share. I think already. So, thank you. Thank. Welcome, Megan. I haven't met you yet, but thanks for coming on. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Anderson, and I'm um, down the street. I I guess. Um, so glad to be here. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to speak, Mark. Um, I, uh, and everyone, thank you for being here. Um, I'm with uh, the Black Alliance for Peace, 
solidarity network. And so I just want to quickly mention while we were um, speaking, thank you, Yuri, for um, uh, just your thorough um, presentation. I, I have uh, lots uh, of respect. So um, the uh, Chicago Peace Action, which is a um, solidarity network um, organization member of the Black Alliance for Peace Solidarity Network, if the, um, is having a um, event that is a webinar online and everyone is invited. I'll drop the link in um, when we get going uh, or after I'm finished, just because my um, physical strength is not great to do multiple things at once. So, but it is on February uh, 15th, the day after Valentine's, and it will have um, a couple of great uh, three speakers, uh, uh, one from uh, the uh, Black Agenda Reports, uh, comrade um, Jackie Lukman, uh, and then uh, also uh, Marcy Wing uh, Wingograd uh, with Code Pink and retired Colonel uh, Lawrence Wilkerson uh, will be speaking about how um, and why uh, to why and how to end the war in Ukraine. So um, that should be something I will um, drop the bit.ly in the chat in a little bit. So for the Black Alliance for Peace, I'm gonna share this because I really want people to be aware of what AFRICOM is. But first, um, I will let you know, um, there's my dog. So where did the, <laughs> where did the presentation go? Excellent. Uh, it seems to have disappeared. It couldn't. Okay, now. So that's. We're um, starting to see it. It's to okay, come good. Here. here we go. Okay, thanks for your patience, everyone. I'm not um, by no means uh, great with um, uh, speaking. So I appreciate you bearing with me. So um, the Black Alliance for Peace, shut down Africa, um, and then exposing US uh, empire in Africa. So it's not advancing. So the uh, Black Alliance for Peace, otherwise known as BAP, seeks to recapture and redevelop the historic anti-war, anti-imperialist, pro-peace positions of the radical Black movement through educational activities, organizing and movement support, organizations and individuals in the Alliance work to oppose both militarized domestic state repression and the policies of destabilization, subversion, and the permanent war agenda of the US state globally. And then I know, um, I really like to, let's see, show this video. It's four minutes long. Is that okay, Mark? Yes, 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 yes. Four minutes, good, yes, thank you. Is it? Don't be showing us anything then inappropriate now. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm, yeah. I know. <laughs> they like to censor. I know. They love censoring. That's true. Thank you for your patience. I want to turn your volume up just a little bit. To turn a profit. Now, over 400 years later, the United States is a massive empire. It has 800 military bases and at least a dozen colonies scattered across the globe. Ever since its founding, the U.S. has always been at war. And it's the only country in history to 
to use nuclear weapons against people. At this very moment, the U.S. is engaged in at least seven wars of occupation and regime change. The mission? To ensure U.S. businesses have access to land, resources, and cheap or slave labor. But the 1% also wages war against Black and colonized people in the U.S., just as they've done from the start. Police continue to murder, brutalize, and surveil Black people. Our communities are impoverished, starved of resources, and thrown in jail. All the while, police departments become more and more like occupying armies. And the military budget, well, it just keeps getting bigger. The Black Alliance for Peace was launched in 2017. The Black Alliance for Peace, uh, as an organization, uh, committed to revitalizing the traditional anti-war positions of the Black community. The United States is the worst abuser of human rights in the world. If you look at the invasions, the proxy wars, the sanctions, the powers that be are seeing a threat to the status quo. It does not matter whether the United States government agrees with Maduro and his policies because six billion Venezuelans wanted him to lead them. As a sovereign people, they have a right to determine their own direction and future. Everyone has a place in this movement. We must be organized. If we want peace, we have to be willing to fight for it. Our campaign is no compromise, no retreat. Defeat the war on African Black people in the U.S. and abroad. The campaign includes the demands to end police militarization, stop their training by the Israeli Defense Force, shut down AFRICOM, remove all U.S. military presence from Africa, defund the military, and close the 800 military bases around the world. Black people have always been the consciousness and change agents within this brutal regime. Now can be no different. We are in the heart of the empire and we must remember our fight for liberation is connected to the liberation of Black, Brown, and working class people everywhere. It is time for us to stand up to oppose U.S. war and murder and defeat the U.S., EU, NATO axis of domination. That is why the Black Alliance for Peace was founded. And that is why we need you. So uh, can you hear me again? Yes. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Um, so a pretty powerful video um, and um, definitely why one reason I'm a member of the Black Alliance for Peace Solidarity Network. So uh, why we focus on uh, Africa is um, I'll just, I know I um, probably should um, make things brief. So I'll, I'll read the second paragraph um, and, I, and I hate um, removing anything from this, but um, I'll just read it out loud. I'm sure you can read it. Um, so Africa has long been the focus of foreign exploitation of, this, of the continent's land, resources, and people. As everyone knows, Africans find themselves in the Western Hemisphere because of slavery and its exploitation of the labor of those who were enslaved. But the interest in Africa of those foreign to the continent was not limited to human trafficking. There was an even greater interest in Africa's gold, diamonds, cobalt, oil, and other natural resources, too numerous to, to list. Because Africa was colonized by Western capitalist interests and robbed of its wealth, 
Africans resisted and drove the colonizers from the continent, or so they thought. In the years since, in independence came to Africa, it has become painfully clear that European colonizers have managed to retain their grip on the continent by various means, including the manipulation of corrupt pub African public officials. So uh, I'll just, the United States has always had its hand in the exploitation of Africa, but it has never widely been regarded as a colonizer. The U.S. likes it that way because it has is helpful to its global image as a benevolent, justice-loving, democratic nation. However, under cover of darkness, the U.S. has played a leading role in maintaining that very iron grip on Africa. So then AFRICOM, you're wondering, uh, the, is the United States Africa uh, Command. It's one of 11 of the US Department of Defense combatant commands with a geographical function and mission that provides command and control of military forces. AFRICOM is responsible for all US Department of Defense exercises and security operations on the African continent. Um, it's island nations, excuse me, and its surrounding waters. AFRICOM is in the, AFRICOM initially began in 2007 and became fully operational on October 1st, 2008. By 2019, 44, African countries had partnered with AFRICOM. Its role is to, to support and work in tandem with US foreign policy in Africa to support US national interests. So the real uh, purpose of AFRICOM is to enable terrorism while at the same time prosecuting the war on terror in Africa. This is contradictory. This contradictory action ensures Africa is in constant state of war and instability. And so AFRICOM nurtures and justifies its own reason for being, for being while developing a coterie of African states and depend, that depend on AFRICOM for their defense. This is done to compare Apply with U.S. and its European allies, quote, strategic interests and objectives, which is control of the unfettered access to Africa's natural resources via their comprador neocolonial partners. Research data shows a marked increase in terrorist groups operating in Africa since Africans formed founding. Partner African states' dependency on AFRICOM also allows US or NATO forces to train most of Africa's militaries, thereby increasing their allegiance to US imperialist interests. So why does BAP oppose AFRICOM? Well, as referenced in our principles of unity, of unity, excuse me, BAP takes a resolute anti-colonial, anti-imperialist position that links the international role of the US empire based war, on war, aggression and exploitation to the domestic war against poor and working class black people in the United States. And then here are some of the other command centers around our earth. And then, so um, I'm wrapping up um, just so you have an idea of what you're in for. Um, so th the 1033 program is, oh dear, sorry, the paper did that. Um, the 1033 program is the, uh, is the, a program that um, the US Department of Defense administers, um, which transfers excess military equipment to US 
policy or to U.S. police forces. So it's wild. Um, so federal, state, and local uh, police forces are getting excess military equipment from um, around the world, uh, from our, our military. So this program has so far sent $6 billion in military gear to police departments. Um, and so some sources. Um, so BAPS demands are um, the complete withdrawal of US forces from Africa, the demilitarization of the African continent, three, the closure of US bases throughout the world, and then four, the Congressional Black Caucus, known as CBC, oppose US Africa Command, AFRICOM, and conduct hearings on AFRICOM's impact on the African continent with the full participation of members of US and African civil society. And, and Megan, the, 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 the fourth point is very important for Columbus, Ohio, because uh, Joyce Beatty is the president or the chair of the CBC. There, uh, uh, okay, yes. Thank you for highlighting that. Thank you, Mark. Um, so um, I will drop these links in the chat also um, here shortly. Um, so yeah, that is uh, an abbreviated version. Um, I appreciate, being, I appreciate you listening. No, thanks, Megan. Thank you very much. And Yuri, as you were talk talking, uh, as Megan, you were talking, Yuri was like, and I forgot to say, um, he was bringing out, and I don't know if you want to share, Yuri, it, since you're here already, why don't you share what you're saying about the the African um, uh, students that were being conscripted in the early days of the war and were not being allowed to leave Ukraine. And a lot of issues were going on. Um, I don't know if Yuri, you want to speak to that or 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 if that's enough. But uh, it, that is a very serious concern um, that they're using the the grain uh, deliveries to Africa as being the reason to 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 promote to pr promote this war. Uh, Yuri, do you want to speak more on that? Uh, indeed, uh, uh, what uh, I already uh, wrote uh, uh, in chat uh, um, uh, uh, during my presentation, I forgot to mention uh, that uh, in the first day of war in Ukraine, uh, our government is tried to conscript African students of Ukrainian universities against their will. Uh, there was famous video uh, 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 broadcasted, uh, if I not mistake, by uh, MSNBC, uh, uh, where African students said the uh, Ukrainian border guards uh, said him, uh, take a gun and go to fight. Uh, 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 and uh, um, uh, treatment of uh, Ukrainian refugees in Western countries uh, is much better uh, in comparison with people of African descent. Uh, it was a uh, uh, situation uh, when, for example, uh, African students uh, trying to evacuate Ukraine uh, were not allowed uh, uh, to um, uh, uh, use uh, um, uh, uh, railway uh, and uh, uh, Ukrainian refugees were allowed. Uh, um, uh, uh, in uh, uh, a time uh, this problem uh, was resolved, uh, but uh, it was a very scandalous situation. And African students in Ukraine united, they created uh, uh, some uh, groups in messengers, uh, and uh, so they uh, indeed self-organized to defend their rights. Uh, also, uh, 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 there is uh, uh, this misuse uh, of uh, food uh, uh, in uh, uh, polarization of global politics. Uh, our foreign ministry uh, is working uh, uh, on uh, influencing African countries uh, engage them into supporting the war. 
uh, this program of grain for Ukraine is accompanied uh, uh, by uh, propaganda efforts and uh, uh, by recruitment of uh, uh, foreign fighters. And also, according to some sources, some weapons uh, supplied uh, for uh, uh, Ukrainian military, uh, this uh, uh, widely solicited uh, uh, weapons, uh, uh, which uh, uh, Western military industrial complexes are eager uh, to provide to Ukraine uh, for uh, taxpayers' money, uh, for money of taxpayers which deprived of welfare to produce these weapons and send them to Ukraine. Uh, 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 some of these weapons are uh, uh, going to black market, uh, and these weapons are ending in African battlefields, exacerbating ongoing bloodshed. There are some uh, indication of this, and uh, uh, you, you can Google it. Uh, indeed, uh, 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 it is a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, demonstration that the uh, world is interdependent. And uh, uh, support of war in Ukraine means support of war everywhere. It is a war system, uh, a system of endless and universal war. So to, to change this, we need a, a systemic uh, structural changes uh, in economy. We need to cure cancer of militarism and military industrial complex. It will take a lot of efforts. Uh, it will need uh, resources. It will need dedication. Uh, but uh, I hope uh, humankind can uh, cure from disease of war. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, I was updated. Um, Horsford, a uh, representative of Horsford is, is the new chair of the CBC of out of Nevada. Um, um, Joyce, Miss Beatty was um, uh, the, the past chair for the last, while the war was beginning and while the war was transgressing, but now Horsford has now been able to take over. So hopefully we can uh, jump on his on his uh, uh, tail and and maybe make them make some kind of statement um, that is contrary to the war. Uh, CBC has been a very much a long, I mean, the, the, there has been no Democrat that has stepped out against the war. Uh, even Barbara Lee is her voice has been silenced. Um, so we're um, we're lit, we're in a we're in a new era where there's not much um, Democrat support, and uh, actually the anti-war voice is uh, becoming from very right wing and very convoluted reasonings why they're against the war. Um, so what you know, the United States is definitely uh, our voices for peace are going to get. We, <laughs> It was very confused, and we need to really, really push out our education on what's going on, what's progressive, what's moving uh, the, the the ball forward down the road. Um, thank you again for updating me on that, um, uh, Kyle. Kyle, uh, uh, let's take a little commercial break. <laughs> so, sort of, uh, we are uh, February eleventh, uh, two thousand twenty-three, Columbus Free Press Salon. Um, thank you again. We're, we're listening to voices of peace in the world of conflict. Um, uh, but Cynthia wanted to bring in Kyle to speak a little bit about a legislative agenda that's going on. Uh, Kyle, are you ready to talk a little bit about that? And then we'll get back to our discussion. But at, at your, 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 your involvement uh, already has been part of this tonight because you corrected me on, <laughs> on and, and gave me the definition of uh, who the new chair is. So thank you. OK, go ahead, Kyle. Thank you for that introduction, and uh, and uh, thank you for all the presenters tonight. I'm Kyle Pierce. I'm the executive director with the Ohio Coalition to End Qualified Immunity. We are working to place an amendment to the Ohio Constitution on the ballot in the 2024 general election to end qualified immunity, to end prosecutorial immunity, to end statutory, statutory immunity, and to uh, make government make a change to prevent a right, a similar rights violation from occurring when someone wins their case against the government in the civil courts. It would also allow for the uh, termination of employees' contract uh, if they are found to violate a person's rights. Now that is optional. Uh, it's not required that they be fired. Um, you know, maybe uh, training, more training needs to be done. Um, 
uh, maybe better training, uh, more frequent training, uh, maybe a restructuring of a department, be it what it may, to prevent a similar rights violation from occurring in the future. Um, you can find out more about us at uh, oceqi.org. Our current needs right now are, we need people who will collect signatures for this petition from your friends, your family, your coworkers, um, your colleagues. We are submitting these signatures to the Attorney General on the 23rd of this month uh, after our press conference at the Ohio State House. Uh, all press is welcome, um, and the Columbus Free Press has actually reported on this. I will drop a link to the amendment in the chat. Um, and then also for anyone who would like to collect signatures, the email is there too to email me. Um, I don't know, um, uh, Mark, are you guys going to be sending up a sending out a follow-up email after this? <laughs> Yes, what Suzanne does, she gets everything down into a beautiful report back of what's going on, and she'll uh, collect all the links and any other attachments that need to happen. So please put everything in the chat that makes it easier for her. Um, and as uh, as uh, Tom Over was signing off and giving his over, he says uh, the Congressional Black Caucus has not been a very, much, you know, Glenn Ford, our good friend, good friend who passed away in the last few years, um, always said that they were the mis the biggest misleaders in the world. And so it, we can also include the progressive coalition. I don't want to just label the black coalition as being wrong. It, progressives, any of anyone that's out that's been elected lately has been wrong. <laughs> it's been wrong. So yeah, Kyle, um, we will uh, collect all that information. So please put whatever you need into that final report and, and we will definitely post it out to our, our links and we send it out to about 4.5 million. No, I'm teasing them. It's not that, it's not that big. It's, it's, <laughs> all right, thank you. Is, is that good? Thanks, Kyle. Uh, Cynthia, did you have any more addition to the, what you want, Kyle? Kyle was making the announcement, but I know you've been out on the front lines doing your thing. Anybody else have anything? I mean, we've had a lot of knowledge dropped on us tonight, and uh, we know we're living in a time of, of uh, serious, serious uh, work that needs to be done. Um, let alone, you know, the, uh, Megan mentioned the, the 1033, the, 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 the qualified immunity uh, issue is very much tied into that. Um, the 1033 uh, uh, gives police forces think that they have the right to be just like the military. And that is not what a police force was ever set up to be. Now, there are arguments about what the police force originally was and is and always has been an overseer, et cetera, et cetera. But the police force was never meant to be the police or the military of, of the United States. And so that is an issue. Tekla, thank you for uh, bringing the Glenn Ford's name into this conversation. I, I, I miss the brother so much. I, I used to see him about every year, uh, about every 10 months. I get, get to go and just hear him just go off on people. And it was just such a beautiful, beautiful person. And I'm missing him already. Thank you. Tekla, did you have any update on, on your uh, husband's issue? We, we mentioned him in, in December. And then Mary Jane, do you have any uh, other uh, legislative issues that are coming up? And uh, Sandy, other folks? Sandy has a question about the petition. Yeah. We get off of that subject. Okay, let, we'll get to, yes, uh, Sandy. Uh, do, do, go ahead, Sandy, first. Go ahead. Are you on, able to unmute? No, not yet. Um, so, uh, Stephen, if we can get Tecla, Sandy, and Mary Jane uh, Borden. Uh, uh, there's yeah. Sandy. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this petition, um, we're collecting signatures and then turning it in in March. What's How can we do that so quickly? <laughs> so we've been working with our coalition partners to uh, collect these signatures throughout January and February. The initial signature submissions to the attorney general only needs 1,000 valid signatures with a standard validity rate of 50%. We need to get about, we need to get about double that. So we are planning on turning in at least 2,000 signatures. The maximum we can submit is 3,000. 
We are submitting them on the 23rd of this month of February. Uh, and the reason we can go through that so quickly is we are working with all our coalition partners, you know, Black Lives Matter Cleveland, Black Lives Matter Dayton, You Are the Power, uh, ACLU, Ohio, um, AFP Ohio, surprisingly. Um, it's, it's everyone working together is making this possible. It is not just our team, it is a, a group of, of organizations and people who intersect on this particular issue. So you still need signatures? Yes, we do. Okay, I sent you an email, thanks. Great, thank you so much. Thanks, Kyle, thanks, Sandy. Um, Tecla, please update us on on uh, Willie's issues going on. And did he have his uh, uh, parole have, hearing yet or yes, not? Willie had a parole hearing, and they said we can't let you know for sixty days. Hmm. So we don't know whether he will be granted parole or not. But there were positive aspects and also negative aspects to the parole hearing. But the very positive aspects were they talked about. If, if he were out, what would he do? And this is the first time they ever talked seriously about his reentry program. Wow. What they said was, if you got out, would you be willing to go to a halfway house instead of to the house of, of you and your wife? Mm. Well, when they ask that, there's only one thing you can say. You of have course. to say, yes, of course I would consider that. Yeah. And then they said, and if you were out, would you be willing to take a, they put it as a residential or non-residential substance abuse program? Because one of them said, uh, well, when you take drugs, you become, I don't, I've forgotten the words, but the idea was you become a monster. And it is only this one single event where he was violent after taking drugs. And that was 1983 when all the crimes were committed. So it's not quite right, but you can't fight, can you? So he said, yes, he would be willing to take a program if they mandated it. I don't know if he can get into a halfway house because halfway houses don't like sex offenders in the halfway house because the neighbors don't want the halfway house if there are sex offenders there. Yeah. Tecla, I, I can help you on that issue maybe. Um, also, so, do you, uh, as, Julian as Assange, ambiguous. you also- as, as Sort of the result was ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Don't know yet how it will turn out. Yeah. Well, hope keep us up to date. Six within you know next two months. I hope and you'll thank hear. Thank you good. to everybody that wrote a letter or signed the petition. It was a big help, and and the parole board said, "Oh, he has a lot of support." So yeah, I, th I think it was mainly because of Yoshi's letter that you. No, I'm, kidding. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> but um, what about uh, Julian Assange? He has a new movie, uh, and his father and brother are going around country doing a, a uh, presentation, and hopefully we'll get him through to Columbus here. Uh, do you have any updates on Assange's? I don't, but I think his supporters are, are feeling very positive about it. Yeah, there's there's some great movement going forward. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Yeah. Um, Mary Jane, do you have any updates for us at this point? Um, I know there's there's some challenges that are moving forward, but there's also uh Stephen, can you get Mary Jane? Hang on, we'll get you, we'll get you, we'll get you, we'll get you. There you go, you're good now. Unmute. Thank you. Oh, good evening, everybody. Um, okay, my first comment just and it's unrelated to marijuana, but it is because uh with Bob's and Suzanne's help about 10 years ago we were we were the experts in ballot initiatives in Ohio for medical marijuana and so I got really really familiar with the process and what I'm understanding is going to happen with the qualified immunity is they collect 1,000 initial valid signatures and they can collect them anytime uh, but they can when they turn them in I think a good time to turn them in is at the end of March 
uh, but you're still on a tight deadline because you'll probably, if you want to be on the ballot and, and uh, amendments, assuming they're constitutional, can only be on a fall ballot. So that would be the fall ballot 2023 or 2024. And between whenever they uh, collect their initial ones and assuming the High Journey General says their, their summary is a fair and truthful statement of the initiative itself, then they can go out and collect, I think it's 400 some thousand, if again, if this is a constitutional amendment for ballot placement again in the fall. And I'm going to imagine they will need signature gatherers for the initial signatures if they don't have them already. But of course, they'll need them for the 400,000 that they'll need to submit to go to the uh, ballot in the fall. So good luck, guys. I really uh, will be following you. This is kind of like old home work for me. So I appreciate what you're doing. As far as medical mar or marijuana goes in general, um, uh, the the bill to expand um, uh, the program that as it exists right now has been introduced and is under debate by the legislature. Um, I think the legislature wants to see it pass because as uh, another form of um, ending the laws by the people in the state of Ohio is called an initiated statute. This is opposed to a constitutional amendment. And so last year, uh, the folks for regulate marijuana like alcohol collected a sufficient amount of signatures to have the uh, their initial language placed before the legislature. That would be this. They, it was just forwarded by the uh, High Secretary of State's office. Although I have not seen an actual bill on, on online that has that language in it. Now this language has to pass the legislature uh, unchanged. And if they do, it becomes law and adult use cannabis will be legal in Ohio. That's the purpose of regulate marijuana like alcohol, just like it sounds. Now, if uh, the legislature does not place the, uh, do, does not pass the ballot, does, does not pass the issue, or if it changes the language of it, then the campaign can go out and collect a, 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 another, I think it was, um, they, I think the benchmark is somewhere around 140,000, 150,000 signatures for each of these passes. But you, like uh, our gentleman just before says, you got to double that if you want to meet a validity rate, uh, because I think normal validity rates for about, you know, 50% of all the signatures that you collect, about 50 to 60% of them will be good, or at least sufficiently good to um, be passed by the Attorney General and the High Secretary of State through to the process. So anyway, if um, again, if the legislature fails to act or changes the initiative, uh, then it can be the next round of signatures, about 150, 200,000 plus, will be collected by, um, I think, I'm not sure what the deadline is this year. It's probably, I think it's around July, sometime early July. Uh, then those, those signatures will be validated by the Secretary of State's office and the initiative will go on the ballot, just like hopefully this other one will as well in the fall of 2023. Now, you know, with ballot initiatives, um, it's often thought that you want to run them in the year of a, a, of a big general election like 2024 when we'll have a presidential election because these initiatives bring out uh, left-leaning voters who are out, out to pass them. But I think in both cases, it's, it's urgent enough that we hope that they will be on the 2023 ballot and pass there as well. Any prospects for the General Assembly passing adult use measure itself, other than being motivated by the initiated statute, I think are just, they're zero to narrow to one to none. Looking at the, the federal level, um, I think they're going to still try to work through some legalization. I don't think it's totally off the table, but with the, the uh, Republicans in charge of the U.S. House of Representatives and someone like, <clears throat> I'm not sure I could say this nicely, uh, Jim Jordan being chair of the Judiciary Committee and being just so totally anti-cannabis, he's totally, totally anti-anything that we're, we're pro, um, it it's just seems real unlikely that um, adult use legislation will make it through the U.S. House of Representatives and go on to the Senate where I believe the Senate would pass it and Biden would probably sign it because I think he's going to need all the impetus. If he gets a bill like that in front of his desk uh, before uh, you know, the 20, 2024 election, he's going to need all the impetus he can to, assuming he runs, and assume, of course the Democrats will have a candidate, to get Democratic uh, President of the United States and then um, also hopefully overturn the House. 
um, that's a brief res uh, um, version of my story. I think for now I could go on, but I, th I want to publish another. I've been slow in publishing my Mary Jane's Guide articles because I just got overwhelmed with other stuff to do. But I'm looking at putting one out probably within the next couple of weeks. So look for updates into that. Remember my my my, my articles for the free press are called what? Mary Jane's Mary Jane? Guide. Yeah. All about marijuana. That's right, Mary Jane. And you you like the record keeper, so keep keep going. Post, post, post. And we do encourage folks to write for the free press. Please, please, please. We need folks to be out on the front lines writing about what's going on in the world. And please go and write, write, write and bring it to us. We will post it. Um, more more uh, uh, unique and, and original pieces we want. Totally. Uh, Pat, Marita, another first person that's keeping up on some of the legislation that's going on uh, on the anti-nuke issues as well as other. Um, we spoke about um, a pike 10 big issue coming up on February 15th, which is coming up this week. Do, do you have any updates on that this uh, right now? Uh, Stephen, can you get Pat to uh, be uh, on as well, please? Thank you. And then uh, Yuri, again, thank you, Megan, again, thank you for being here. Um, uh, your voices are very important, and we just need to uh, continue to understand that we're part of an international movement uh, to, to uh, uh, bring down the, the, the evils and, and bring up the good. Um, thanks, Pat. Go ahead. Okay, so on February 15th, some of us are going down uh, uh, to Piketon. If anyone would like to go with us, uh, you can uh, email me at my name, Pat Marida, M-A-R-I-D-A, at Outlook.com. They're having a, a hearing, the Ohio EPA is having a hearing on proposed partial cleanup plan and the hazardous waste permit renewal. So two different Things are going on. So uh, for Megan, for Megan, who may be closer down there, that's she's in Cincy, so she, she might be able to go down, but she may not know what Piketon is. Do you know Piketon yet? <laughs> Piketon's one of the four anti-nuke uh, or oh. not anti for the nuclear weapon industry development plants that were of the 17 at one point, and now they're at the point of trying to clean up and they're bringing a lot of thought into how to do a uh, Python and, and they're trying to convert it. They've always looked for an, a, 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 an additional uh, reason why they have that big, 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 I mean, if you ever go down there, it's gigantic that- They enriched uranium down there um, from 1954 to something like to, to 2001. Uh, I guess we- Mark And we, shut, and we, we, shut, we shut it down and we shut it down. <laughs> January 15th did you mean February 15th February February 15th yeah it's coming down Tuesday yeah Pat you said January but it's February February oh, it's January yeah. <laughs> don't go backwards go forwards <laughs> yes well so they enriched uranium which was a huge process they the buildings there covered over 100 acres under roof and they brought in probably illegally, uh, high high level radioactive wastes and ran it through that enrichment process, which should have only had uranium in there. And so the whole place is contaminated with uh, with transuranics, neptunium, americium, uh, uh, plutonium, and, then the, uh, and of course, all other manner of radioactive uh, varieties of other elements. So in, in the process of trying to hurry up and clean it up, because they want new, new, new nuclear facilities down there. Uh, they More stuff is going off the site. Uh, our group, the Ohio Nuclear Free Network, uh, has hired uh, Joe Mangano. Some of you may have heard of him. He's an international expert on health statistics, and he has done the Baby Teeth Project, if you may have heard that, talking about uh, strontium-90 that's been uh, uptaken by baby's teeth and that way he's been able to determine how, just how much these babies have been exposed to radioactivity. Well, he we've hired him to do two reports, and the first one is completed on Pike County. And Pike County is where this, where uh, this they call it the Portsmouth Nuclear Site, uh, but, but many of them refer it to Piketon, which is the town where it is. Um, so he has 
his report just using statistics from the U.S. Center for Disease Control has showed that cancer deaths increased from, they were, were well below, 12% below the national average. Now, this is a rural area, and they have gone up to 38% above. And the death rate has gone up, it's 85% above the national average. That's the death rate from age zero to 74. So it's devastating. And the same thing is happening with six counties around it. So that's the, state, the study he's about to come out with. And um, I can post post that study. There's a, the first page of the, of the uh, Pike County study it has the summary. And then I think the whole thing is 24 pages or something like that. And I'll, I'll see if I can post a link on that tonight. So thank you. If you if you can't find it tonight, send it over to Suzanne. She, I'm sure she can include it as later. Sorry, Suzanne, I'm oh, giving I'll you a it. I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, board members, anybody from the Free Press Salon, uh, Free Press uh, board, would you like to, any any updates uh, of your work that you're doing? I see three, four, five of us on right now. They are the backbone of what backbone of what we're about. Okay, uh, the Free Press is a a, a um, institute. It's a contemporary institute of contemporary or uh, Columbus Institute of Contemporary Journalism. So we are a matrix of public public uh, uh, media. So we have two radio stations. We have newspaper. We have podcasts. We have uh, uh, online presence. Now our newspaper is sort of online still, but we hope sooner or later to have some print later on down the road. Who knows? Uh, but everybody says that you know print's out of out of fashion. But I still love picking up some paper. I love it. And looking at that and touching it and smelling it, I love it. But um, that's me. I'm, you know, 63 years old. There you go. Um, any members of the board that might want to do a, a final check on what's going on? Anybody? 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 I don't see anybody jumping at it. But you are you are the heroes of the free press. So thank you so much for stepping up and taking leadership. Um, on everything you do. Uh, and we are, Mary, Mary was just, one of our board members was just on the local news talking about youth violence. And and we're probably going to have her, Mary Ritter is going to come and probably talk about some of her research on uh, youth violence and 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 crime and, and uh, sort of her, her research is showing that you know, all the hype that's going on saying, you know, we're going out of crazy. Everything's going crazy. No, actually, everything's going down, down, down in a lot of ways. So it's quit, quit talking crazy. And let's talk about how to build economic uh, sustainability in our communities and give the youth a chance. You know, don't talk, keep talking about negative about the youth. The youth need to be about they are the next generation. And I do invite everyone, come to Barrick Recreation Center next week. We have, and this is my little plug, we have uh, love letters to the next generation Black girl. We're going to be doing it with the coalition of 100 Black women. They're going to be leading, reading letters to the girls they gather up. Uh, we're hoping to get 50, 60 people out. It's going to be a tea ceremony at Barrick Recreation Center in South Side of Columbus, uh, at one to three uh, on next Saturday, February 18th. So come on out. It's sort of our Valentine's twist. So, um, and Piketon is doing their own twist on uh, Py uh, on uh, Valentine's by having a, a hearing at uh, EPA is having a hearing on February 15th. So there's all different kind of twists on the Valentine's Day right now. So, hey Mark, you need um, to send you need to send me that information. That okay, I I will. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Uh, um, and Yuri, again, I don't know if he's still on. And Megan, uh, thanks again for uh, for uh, jumping on with us uh, to join the the salon, the February eleventh, two thousand thirteen Free Press Salon. Uh, we are uh, live and live stream on Facebook, so please hit hit those and like them, and so that we can get those those spread out as well as we can. Okay. And again, uh, we're probably, it's getting close to our time when we sort of get a little bit of, um, oh, look at that. Great. Who's sharing that? And what is that? That's Kroger's. What is that? Please share. <laughs> Stephen, is that you? Who's sharing that? 
But yeah, uh, thank you again. Yeah, go ahead. That was Tom Over did those signs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That did look like an over over project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm no. sorry he had to leave off real quick. <clears throat> So we're, we're probably getting more towards what we usually call family time, or not really family time, just informal conversation. I didn't want to take the 